Tonight on The Readout. We have to be brave enough to address even the most sensitive questions. Migration, gender, and the clash of civilizations. Don't worry, a Christian politician cannot be racist. Hungarian autocrat Viktor Orban was accused of pure Nazi rhetoric by one of his own aides. But that did not prevent him from receiving the red carpet treatment by Republicans at CPAC. Also tonight, the Russian show trial ended just as everyone knew it would, with a barbaric sentence for basketball star Brittany Griner. So how soon until a deal gets done to bring her home? Plus, breaking news late today in the Alex Jones defamation trial, the jury has returned a verdict on compensatory damages for his Sandy Hook lies. We begin tonight with the future that Republicans want. Today, the right-wing love fest CPAC kicked off in Dallas with a keynote speech that, if you didn't know any better, could have easily just been delivered by Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump. Just take a listen. I am an old-fashioned freedom fighter. Politics, my friend, are not enough. This war is a culture war. We were the first ones in Europe who said no to illegal migration and stopped the invasion of illegal migrants. We had to build not just a physical wall on our borders, but a legal wall around our children to protect them from the gender ideology that targets them. To sum up, the mother is a woman, the father is a man, and leave our kids alone. Full stop, end of discussion. Actually, that man who received a standing ovation for bashing the culture wars and same-sex marriage, etc., is Viktor Orban, Hungary's authoritarian dictator and current idol of the anti-democracy right. The new Vladimir Putin, just without the land grab obsession. Orban told the crowd that liberals don't want him there and American conservatives should join forces with him. The same Viktor Orban, who in a speech just a few weeks ago said that Europeans should not become peoples of mixed race leading a longtime advisor to resign, characterizing Orban's remarks as a pure Nazi text worthy of Joseph Goebbels. Those comments were obviously not too racist for CPAC organizers since they followed through with their invite, giving Orban nearly an hour to spout demagoguery, showing exactly why the current anti-democratic Republican Party sees him as a model of success, relying entirely on appeals to racism, anti-migrant paranoia and Christian nationalism. Naturally, the twice impeached former president welcomed the autocratic leader at his New Jersey resort earlier this week, a place that's become a must stop for the world's worst leaders in their golf tournaments, saying it was great spending time with my friend. In fact, in a 2018 speech, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon called Orban Trump before Trump. The reality is Viktor Orban is a right wing dream for the Republicans trying to destroy our democracy from within as Europe's leading defender of fascism abroad. Orban is also the continent's biggest proponent of white replacement theory. You already mentioned that invasion of migrants, which explains why the biggest promoter of the Orbanization of the Republican Party is Tucker Carlson. So much so that he took his show on the road to Hungary for an entire week last summer, touting it as a beacon for America. A small country with a lot of lessons for the rest of us. And one last thing. Because the example of Hungary is so powerful, not just in Europe, but to the world, to the entire world, not simply the West, what you can do with a relatively small economy and not many people, if you're just serious about keeping your nation from being destroyed. Now, in case you have any doubt that right wingers are fully on board with Orban's worldview, look no further than his biggest applause line during today's speech. We have seen what kind of future the globalist ruling class has to offer. The globalists can all go to hell. I have come to Texas. Joining me now is David Jolly, former Republican congressman who now co-chairs a new third party effort, the Forward Party. Rula Jabril, visiting professor at the University of Miami, teaching about propaganda and genocide. And Kim Lane Shepley, professor of sociology and international affairs at Princeton University. And Professor Shepley, I am going to start with you because I know that your expertise is Hungary and this uh, sort of ultra nationalist, Christian nationalist movement there. Um, This guy, Orban, has been around for quite a long time. He had some things to say about President Obama. whose term his prime ministership also uh, connected to. Um, 
it does seem to me that he is the foremost promoter of Christian nationalism uh, and anti-migrant paranoia in Europe. Would I be right about that? Yes, you absolutely would. So in the migrant crisis of 2015, when more than a million people came from Syria and Iraq and so forth, seeking um, safety in Europe, Orban was the one who built a wall, built a wall before Trump built a wall. He pushed people back across that wall. He separated kids and parents. The thing that he did actually in 2015 was exactly what Trump went on to do later. So he has been exactly a model for Republican efforts to deal with the border. And I might say that one of the shocking things about his speech today is, you know, here is a foreign leader of an allied country who has come to the U.S. to, to meet at the convention of the opposition party. And one of the things he said was, we must coordinate the movement of our troops because we face the same challenge. He's recruiting the Republican Party to work with Hungary, which is not something the leader of an allied party typically does. Let me ask you this. What is the bridge between, as you said, the policies match identically, and even the white replacement theory stuff does match with Tucker Carlson. Yeah. So we know what the bridge is between Tucker Carlson and him. I mean, Tucker Carlson's father, I believe, had, had, makes some money off of off of him. Um, he's got sure. it, Tucker Carlson. He's got this. Uh, his father, I believe, there it is. His, his father had uh, his father, Richard Carlson, is listed as a director of a Washington-based firm that has lobbied Viktor Orban. So we know what Tucker has a connection to him. But what's Trump's right. connection? How did that feeding to get Orban's ideas into Trump, or did it? Yeah. Well, so first, the connection with Tucker Carlson is interesting because the Hungarian government paid Tucker Carlson's father to make the introductions to Tucker Carlson, and then they paid Tucker Carlson to go to Hungary for that week in Hungary. And also, with CPAC, I noticed that one of the sponsors is something called the Center for Fundamental Rights in Hungary. So it also appears that Hungary paid to get Orban onto the program at CPAC. So that's one thing. But there are lots of ties between the Trump circle and the Orban circle. So Steve Bannon is clearly one of them. He not only called Orban Trump before Trump, but he actually created both of them in lots of ways. And even before that, you know, uh, Orban's big electoral victory in 2010 was engineered by a pair of Republican electoral consultants called, called Arthur Finkelstein and Norman Beardbaum. And they engineered his 2014 campaign. So there are lots of connections. And I suspect viewers of MSNBC may remember this character called Sebastian Gorka, mm. who was the guy who showed up at the Trump inaugural ball wearing not a neo-Nazi uniform, but the original Nazi uniform of his father. Uh, eventually, he got thrown out of the White House, but he still has been hanging around in Trump circles. So there are a lot of ties between the Orban people and the Trump people. And this yeah. is a very deep and wide set of connections. And, and Rula, I mean, it is literally, it's easily, it's obviously more convenient in some sense to sort of Orbanize the party at this point than to Putinize it, right? Because Putin, what he's doing in Ukraine is so objectionable and so repugnant that it's kind of difficult for Republicans to continue with this adoration of Putin in this moment. But Orban is sort of a new thing for a lot of their followers. So they're, they've definitely clung on to him. What do you make of this connection that, they're, uh, that, that is now being drawn between Orban uh, and the Republican Party? Well, Orban talked in 2018 about the access of the willing. Uh, Orban, Trump, Salvini in Italy, uh, the fascists in France, in uh, Vox in Spain. There's a real ideological common values, which is anti-immigration, uh, trying to use the powers and tools of democracy to destroy it from within. Exactly like my, I believe the former speaker said that, you know, the way they come to power is through laws, the way they hold on to powers through laws, not through bullets or bombs. You know, uh, in this moment that Putin is destroying Ukraine and bombing Ukraine, he is the one that actually gave them the tools, the propaganda, disinformation, conspiracy theories, the white supremacist conspiracy theory. And I want to remind everybody that in 2018, when when Orban talked about the access of the willing, two terrorist attacks took place. One in New Zealand, a white supremacist killed 55 Muslims in a church. He cited Victor Orban, he cited Donald Trump in his manifesto as the defensor of the white race. Another guy in Italy who was a candidate, a local candidate, Luca Traini, he went on a shooting spree. He shot six people of color 
And he shot also against the headquarters of the Democratic Party. And immediately after, people start blaming immigrants. We are seeing now, as we speak, as we have elections all over Europe, especially in Italy in two months, Victor Orban rhetoric led to an attack in, in, in northern Italy where a black man was killed. But not only that, we've seen also how Putin and, and Orban and Salvini and other are coordinating. So uh, Putin is controlling basically the migration in Libya, the port in Libya. We've seen for the first time since two years a uh, rising of migrants who arrive in Italy. Why? Because he understands how to, to weaponize migration, propaganda, oil and gas and food and grain and other things to dismantle democracy. And he's aiding and abetting all of his allies in Europe and in the United States. Well, and, you know, and, and to bring you into this, David, I mean, the Republican Party is ripe and open for this. I mean, there's been this, you know, sort of fi this sort of fetishism of Vladimir Putin for a very long time. Donald Trump really pushed that. He's it's he's now pushing it with Viktor Orban. And of course, Tucker Carlson is pushing it. And, and I see it the most urbanization in somebody like DeSantis, who now has this sort of like propaganda school that he's sending teachers to in the summer where they teach them that sure. Thomas Jefferson and George Washington opposed slavery and don't bother to mention that they owned slaves, where he He's essentially forcing teachers to accept this indoctrination where he's uh, uh, now threatening to where well, he fired um, a U.S. A state attorney who refused to prosecute people uh, related to abortion, where he's doing these openly authoritarian sort of urbanist things and pushing what does feel like a version That's of white right. replacement theory that you can't make white children feel uncomfortable in school. You can't uh, say anything about racism at the workplace that you have to sort of create this sort of white nationalist environment everywhere or else. That's exactly right, Joy. And let me say to tell you something that Viktor Orban got right today. He said that the press in the United States will report tomorrow that a racist leader addressed American conservatives. And he was right because he is racist. His policies are racist.